Zombies. What did you think of when I just mentioned these creatures? Did you think of the brain-eating undead? Well, did you ever wonder where the origins of zombies came from? Hello and welcome to Occult Facts. Before we dive further into the subject, please subscribe or at least give us a like. We would really appreciate it. I'm Anna and I'll be talking about, well, like I said, zombies. We need to start with some of the history of voodoo. In the United States, we refer to it as voodoo, but it originated in West Africa as voodoo. Although both are practiced throughout the world, they are very distinct, different religions. They do blur the line a bit and can be intertwined at times through the African, Haitian, and plantation traditions. In West Africa, a zombie, not zombie with an E, means soul believed to have originated from the Congo. Nzamba, meaning the spirit of a dead person. Also, Zombie is a West African deity. In the early 1600s, slavery began with full force. Many people were taken from their homes and along with them their beliefs and culture. And within this culture and the practice of Vodou, they did not believe in prisons. Punishment consisted of fines, exile, and most severe executions. But darker still and most feared was being turned into a zombie. One of the core beliefs of Vodou is that the soul is made of two elements. One controls the body and is called the T-Banage. In its French, and it translates to little good angel. The personality which consists of memory, consciousness, consciousness, and willpower. It also can communicate with spirits. The second element is the gro gross banage, good big angel, controls the basic biological functions of the body, the bakur, which is a controversial term, and depending on who you ask, but I'm going to use it here, takes the t banage, the spirit consciousness, and places it into a container, such as a bottle, through magic. They can use it for protection, to kill crops, or to bring sickness. This leaves the body with just the gros banage, which the Borkur can control. This would be your zombie, and it's only able to perform basic functions and to become a servant. When the Spanish started bringing slaves from West Africa to the island of Hispaniola, the slaves started to merge their beliefs with Catholicism. In 1697, France controlled the western third of the island and it was called Saint-Domingue, now known as Haiti. By 1780, France was producing and importing sugar, coffee, spices, and tobacco throughout Europe, and the demand became great. France needed more slaves to tend to their fields and other needs. 90% of Haiti were enslaved. This made the practice of voodoo to be driven underground. The brutality of slavery was unbearable. The only hopes that an enslaved person held was that through their beliefs of voodoo, I mean voodoo, they believed in an afterlife and you would be returned to Africa to be free. If you committed suicide, you would be condemned to be a zombie and work the fields forever. Another reason you would be turned into a zombie was not only for cheap labor, but also revenge. In 1804, there was a Haitian revolution. By 1894, Haiti was independent and Vodou was an established religion, which 90% of Haitians still practice today. The French brought over their slaves during the Haitian Revolution to America. The practice of Vodou began to change with the influence of indigenous traditions and also with European beliefs. This began Voodoo, where the practice of either religion becomes more complicated. 
It is when the U.S. military in 1950 occupied Haiti, the soldiers brought back stories of the exaggeration of the belief of voodoo, voodoo was um, basically mixed together and it was believed to be black magic. The practitioners were believed to be savages. One man, William Seabrook, wrote a book, The Magic Island, which uh, perpetuated, sorry, this belief. And here is a quote from the book. The zombie, they say, is a soulless human corpse, still dead, but taken from the grave, endowed by sorcery, with a mechanical semblance of life. He stated this when he had seen supposed zombies working the cane fields. There is still a lot of mystery as to how someone truly becomes a zombie. We know that it happens when the soul is taken from the body. But how does one take a soul from a body? There is belief that there is a concoction potion that the pakor or shaman creates, or shaman, I'm sorry, creates. No one really knows because it is looked down upon and it is forbidden knowledge to pass on such sacred secrets. In 1980, a book called Serpent in the Rainbow was released and later was made into a motion picture. The author, Wade Davis, who was a scientist and uh, was at Harvard, went to Haiti to discover the ingredients of zombification. During his time there, he was able to look into research along with the culture and practices of voodoo. He obtained three different samples from different procures, and then he took these samples, and when he went into the samples, he found velvet bean, cane toad, boa constrictor, bearded fireworm, plants of various kinds, even bones of a human child. But the most infam infamous was the puffer fish. And given the right dose, this, this can create paralysis to a victim. It was given to give them the death-like appearance so they would be buried, later dug up by the bakor, and then you would be enslaved and made into a zombie. There are still major debates about, or uh, major debates whether or not, sorry about that, that these are the true ingredients of zombifications that are used in rituals. There are only two recorded incidences of people being made into zombies in Haiti. It is also against the law to be making zombies, so you gotta be careful there. The modern, modern zombies are nothing like the original Haitian zombies of voodoo and voodoo that we know today. The only thing that they have in common are the reflections of the time in which they were created. From evils of colonization and the soul and slavery of yesteryears to the soulless, lifeless consumers of today, they are us. They embody our fear of losing control of ourselves. You can dive further into the creation of zombies in Haitian religions because there is so much to learn and so much information. It was very hard to condense all of it to make some sense because again, a lot of it intertwines and a lot of it has been vilified. Um, in our culture in the United States or modern times, basically. And that didn't happen until the early, I believe 1930s with the first movie depicting white zombie. And truly it is a white zombie because the zombie was a white person. And also the procure in that was also a Caucasian person. So um, it's up to you to dive into it. I fully recommend it and also our times really really it says a lot so thank you for watching and remember to keep searching for the unknown